Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, revolution, as we like to say, quoting the poet uh, Laurette of the American people, uh, Langston Hughes, and welcome to this week. Um, good morning, Rosanna. How are you? Good morning, Joe. I'm doing good. How about yourself? We're joined in, uh, I hear it's hot out there in Los Angeles. It's, it is very hot out here. Yes. You know? And uh, humid, Monday which we're not used to. Oh, it's humid too. Yeah, it's a slight okay. humidity, yeah. And also we got Anita Waters from the Morning. great state of Ohio, Columbus. Morning, Joe. Morning, Joe. Morning Rosanna. Morning, Revolution. Morning. And it's beautiful, beautiful weather in Ohio. Oh, nice. Uh, so, Rosanna, <laughs> maybe you will move to Columbus. and uh... Come visit time, Rosanna. <laughs> yeah. They won't let and, me in uh, from California. <laughs> won't let you into California. No, you, you oh, will. No, I, they won't let me in because I'm from California and we're the hot spot of the coronavirus. Oh, yes, yes. That's discrimination. We we try yeah. to, <laughs> everybody should. No, I mean, you know, it's a Trump, Trump, Trump's policies. And we're going to talk a little bit about that this, this morning. And Scott has joined us. Welcome, Scott. Morning, Scott. Scott. Scott, we can't hear you. Scott, we're joined by Scott. He's on vacation. Someplace in the wilderness morning, of Western I, New York. The Western wilds huh? of New York State. Uh, Come again? The Western wilds of New York State, out in Ellicottville. The Western wilds of, you know, every time I drive to Youngstown, which I normally do about once a month, I go down 80, and about three quarter, a third of the way there, you go through what they call the Pennsylvania wilds. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the, Appalachian mountain range and all that kind of thing. Beautiful, beautiful yes. countryside. My dad used to hunt up there, you know, they had a bus. They had a, a hunters group called the Steel City um, Sportsman's Club. Steel City Sports, they used to hunt deer. But then he got to the point where he couldn't kill a deer anymore. Mm -hmm. So he would just go up there for sightseeing and, and that kind of thing. Nice. Well, so much for my reminiscing. Um, we are gathered here today to talk about what happened this week. And I imagine that the Democratic Party convention, I guess a lot of people watched it. Uh, it was in the news. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Biden and Mrs. Harris were nominated to be uh, the nominees of the Democratic, they're going to stand against Trump. And 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 if they say that democracy is at stake, that's what I heard in all of the speeches, Rosanna, democracy is at stake. And uh, I think they're right. You know, that's a, that's really kind of the main issue of the election. But is it enough uh, to, to win, in your opinion, Rosanna? Well, I think it's it's a step in the right direction. I think we need to, you know, all keep keep the pressure going because it's clearly that we, because of the pressure, all of the points that they touched on during the convention was a result of the mass uprisings by people, the pressure of, you know, systemic racism and the, the defending democracy, voter protection, the post office, saving the post office, all of those things came from the people's movements. So mm. the people's movements, we need to keep, we need to keep that going after uh, the elections because nothing's going to change if we don't keep those, those things going. Now, Anita, you told me that you were focused, laser focused, and you listened <laughs> to the whole thing. You couldn't leave. What attracted you so much about the convention? Well, I, I, I know. I did watch the whole thing. I didn't stay up to watch the whole thing. I would put it on first thing in the morning on C-SPAN, uh, watched last night's. And, um, and, that, and that way I could really pay attention to it while I had my morning coffee. Um, but I, I thought it was really well produced and I was just really interested in the symbols, how they're presenting the uh, country and the electorate symbolically and trying to reach you know, different sectors of the, of the population just to have the, the you know, the biggest possible um, voter turnout and it 
for them uh, possible, like including Republicans and 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 the the segments on different issues. It was very it was very slickly produced. Mm. Um, but at times I thought it was it was really beautiful and a lot of people have called attention to the roll call and I think people who have watched a million conventions in the past know how boring the roll call can be so this was really interesting to see different people in different parts of the country and um and uh, a, a lot of diverse voices there so that was kind of that was nice and it was uh, it was pretty well done I think so okay now now Scott we're not endorsing the Democratic Party, and we're not endorsing the uh, uh, candidates. And we say that the issues, number of which Rosanna identified, are the things that are going to motivate. Do you think that those issues came forward enough uh, based on your reading of the results of the, the speeches? That's, I know you don't like watching yeah, video. That's You're not an anti video that's not guy. That's can really uh, answer fully since I haven't. Um, I haven't delved into the speeches yet. I, uh, I caught some of them sort of overhearing them. I sat down and watched for a couple minutes. Um, but I think what, what sort of stood out to me is on the one hand, what, what Anita said about the, the quality of the production um, and uh, the fact that they, like people are learning to do like virtual meetings in a new way, which is interesting. It's a new communication technology. And, and that's always part of revolutionary, I'm not saying the Democratic Party is a revolutionary organization, but in times of, of revolutionary upsurge, new communication technologies play a big role. I think from what I gathered at the convention, you know, it's important not to be, it's important to realize what it is, right? It's not, um, it's not the, the be all and end all and the definitive, um, uh, sort of statement on, on, on what the movement is. It is a statement organized by one um, set of social forces, largely in this case dominated by um, the what we call the democratic bourgeoisie, sort of um, democratic forces, liberal forces within the ruling class. Um, and it was an attempt. So on the one hand, it showed that there's a huge unity against Trump that, that, that stretches all the way from, you know, all through the labor movement, the people's movement, and, and into even a section of the ruling class. But it also reflects an attempt by these liberal bourgeois forces to sort of claim leadership of, of this movement. But if we look at uh, back to what you think said. so, you don't think that the that the people's forces uh, were claiming that leadership that is kind of you know and they were trying to find a, some kind of happy medium to I think I think know, bring it all together. I think objectively, what Rosanna said is exactly right. That what the driving force of this, the driving force of the democratic movement, is um, is the people's movement and and the working class movement right now. Um, and the, this section of the ruling class is forced to reckon with that, to adapt itself. Um, so even if it looks like, you know, with all the triumphant speeches from Biden and Harris and Obama and Clinton and this and that, even if it looks like they're the standard bearers, they're, they're not. The leaders are, are the movement and, and that is reflected to a degree in the convention. So it's important not to lose sight of where the real momentum is and where the real political oomph is. Now, Rosanna, they were striking broad themes. You know, Mr. Biden was talking about, by the way, we have to remind everybody that that's Scott's homeboy. <laughs> I grew up right next to him and used to have beers with him and his children. All the time. Every, every, huh? We used to play horseshoes together. Horseshoes and Scrabble, <laughs> and Scranton. All those Scrabble old man <laughs> Now, now I want to ask um, Rosanna: Did you have a favorite speech? You know, um, you had Mrs. Clinton, and you had AOC, and you had Michelle Obama, and you had you know Bill Clinton and Barack Obama, and 
all these different Schumer. Did you have a favorite? Well, unfortunately, I did not get to hear uh, AOC's speech. Uh, mm. I, I would imagine I would have liked hers the best just because she really speaks to people and their concerns, but in a, not just in speech, but in actions. And so that carries a lot of weight. I did yeah. uh, hear Michelle Obama's speech. Um, <clears throat> I thought it was very heartwarming. Uh, felt like it came from the heart. Um, uh, so I would just say hers was for me the you know the the best of the bunch. Those are my top two, Michelle and uh, and AOC. And so I got a little choked up when I AOC's presence really does you know it brings something forward in my heart that's very uh, uh, that resonates you know. Um, but uh, Anita, these these themes of uh, light and darkness, um, was there any speech that you thought was the most gripping that that, yeah. that really brought the issue home to you since you spent all of your mornings and part of your afternoons glued to your TV screen? It's just two hours a day. Uh, so it's, it's, it's not- I'm exaggerating. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I think uh, Scott, when you when uh, Joe calls uh, Joe Biden your homeboy, you have a right to say your namesake, uh, Joe Biden. So, <laughs> but uh, my one of my favorite moments was not really a speech, but it was that young woman whose father died of COVID, and she said the memorable line, which was, uh, you know, he. Um, his only pre-existing condition was trusting Donald Trump. And for that, he, she, he paid with his life. And that was just so effective. I mean, she, she was wonderful. And that's what I, I think my favorite part of this was seeing ordinary people. And of course, I don't know any of their names really, but, um, but there were a lot of people who were just uh, heart, gave heartfelt little, um, little, little blurbs um, or little parts of uh, the, the speeches for the, the uh, uh, issues uh, that were, I thought, really uh, effective, and even some of the uh, roll call folks. But I think Michelle Obama's was the most urgent, and that's what I liked about a really urgent, like vote, like your life depends on it because it does. And I, I, I listened to Barack Obama's speech. I didn't see it, and and I, uh, I was doing other things, but um, that is one that I think I need to listen to again because I, I think he. I've heard people talking about it and how um, how it, unusually unusually emotional he was. So um, I think they were both trying to get across, you know, the, the message that Donald Trump just isn't up to the job, and you know, you shouldn't feel bad for having voted for him, but now don't vote for him. So uh, so I think they had a specific message they wanted to get across, and they did effectively. Yeah, Michelle said he's not up to his job, and then she said it is what it is. You know, and, and therefore we have to, we have to take, I want to, have y'all paid any attention to the, uh, uh, a platform and, and uh, uh, of the, that that's being pulled forward, because I think that Rosanna's right, it's the issues that are going, now Bernie talked about the rise of authoritarianism, and uh, I wish he had used the F word, fascism, but he didn't, you know, but Okay, you know that's all right. I think we're talking about the same thing, mm. but he also tied it to the big issues like around healthcare. And he even said, you know, me and Joe, we got a different approach to healthcare, but Joe's approach will, you know, bring more, give more people access than not. And therefore, even though it's not what I want at the moment, it's something that that we should strive to make happen particularly in these COVID-19 uh, conditions, Rosanna. So, um, but I wonder um, if um, we, we, everybody has the idea that after the convention and after the election, um, there should be no honeymoon, that you gotta keep the pressure on, you know? The, the day after you got, I was listening to Bill Fletcher at that Pe People's World Town Hall meeting, and they asked him, he said, 
should there be a honeymoon? And he said, yeah, 24 hours. You know, just... Well, that, that was 24 hours for Obama, but then he, he pointed out um, that in that first, that first uh, 24 hours is when the cabinet was decided and that inflected the course of Obama's presidency. And didn't Bill went on to say, you know, so um, when Trump is kicked out and, and, you know, Biden is in the White House, no honeymoon this time. And I think the, the issue of the cabinet is really important. Who he surrounds himself with, his, his close advisors and, and the heads of the... Right. Really, really okay. key in showing whether um, he's going to be an ally of the people's movement or, or, um, or an ally of the, of the ruling class. I think I think the only way that we can really I, I agree there should be no honeymoon period the very next day you know the, uh, social movements should get back on the street and I think the only way we can really uh, push that forward beginning now is to show how the program and the platform of the Democratic Party uh, how social movements were inf had influenced this platform and to show that we need to keep that pressure on, we need to keep that influence going. Otherwise, you know, we'll get, it'll get back to the same old, same old, and that's not what we've been fighting for. We've been fighting for a change for universal health care, a rise in the minimum wage, all of these things that they had actually flashed on, on the, during the convention about what we demand this and we demand that. Uh, I, so I think that we, Pointing out that that element, that part of it, and, and how social movements shape this democratic platform, and how we need to keep that moving forward, I think it could help in motivating uh, people to stay on the streets and stay focused and stay active, and not think that it's time to rest because it's not going to be time to rest. Well, Speaking of which, one of the big issues is the six hundred dollar, uh, you know, unemployment extension. And I see that there's movement around it, but I don't see um, the trade unions yet in a big way, um, in a public, on the street kind of way, uh, responding to it. I saw. Or, or, or maybe they are, and they're just not covering it. You know, uh, that's also, you know, possible. I saw there was a group in Philadelphia doing a noble, important event on unemployment, but it was just like four or five people with a bullhorn. You know, and uh, I'm like, this is such a big issue. People should be ten thousand people should be on the streets of Columbus, Anita. Uh, well, um, we've had car caravans. We're having weekly car caravans. And yesterday, the um, uh, uh, Democratic challenger for the District 12 uh, seat um, led the led the car caravan. Um, so uh, every Thursday, there's going to be one. But I, but they are really struggling to get people to come out for it. And I think people just feel uh, like a, a sense of uh, futility about that. I mean. Uh, I don't think Rob Portman, I mean, that's who we're trying to influence here is Rob, Senator Rob Portman. I don't think he really cares whether, how many people, you know, drive their cars around uh, beeping around the state house. Hate to say that, it sounds cynical, but uh, I think maybe keeping up the pressure on his office might be even more effective. I'm in this, this group on Facebook called Unemployed Action. Um, and a lot of it is, is testimonials from people who are unemployed and struggling with this and it's it's heartbreaking right to to see like oh you know i don't know how i'm going to make my next rent payment uh i you know um you know I, I had uh you know i found some some temporary work but now uh now that dried up too like this is this is there's an people are suffering to a to an immense degree and and undocumented people um you know more than just about any others because they haven't gotten any of the relief from the other bills so far. So this is, yeah, this is urgent. Like something needs to happen. Well, we had a town hall on that last week. We had about 500 people and we're having a meeting on Sunday 
And if you want to either join the meeting or get involved in the unemployment movement, uh, Rosanna, you can text unemployment to what is it? Um, um, uh, I think it's unemployment to- 525. What is it? Say it again, please. 56525. Five, 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 six, five, two, five. Text unemployment to five, six, five, two, five to get involved because we're going to fight for the 600 because I, I made a prediction and my prediction was that the 600 was going to get passed. And let me tell you folks, this man does not like it when his predictions do not come true. So we <laughs> I, do I can't be wrong. I got to be <laughs> right. <laughs> so come on, we need to get it. Get out of there so that so that I can be, we can be proven because it was a, a communist. Nobody in the communist party leadership disagrees with me. <laughs> you might have been privately. I mean, you might have been privately saying, "Yeah, Joe, I'm not sure about <laughs> about that," but you kept it to yourself, which means that uh, and the board too, Anita and Scott, yeah. all y'all members of the national board <laughs> of the communist. In case y'all didn't know. This is the board, a part of the board of the Communist Party. So I think that just, that just about does it. Mm -hmm. I think we've been going about 20 minutes. So we want to thank everybody for uh, uh, showing up. We want to insist uh, that uh, all of us together keep the pressure on, uh, continue to fight for the 600, continue to fight around the issues, continue to try to bring out the vote because they're trying to uh, suppress it all up and down the country, you know? Uh, it's a dangerous moment. I think that everybody who spoke to that at the convention was right. It's uh, the most important, and the revolutionary duty of the Marxist, of the communist, is to fight to that inch of democracy. That, you know, there's something that Lenin said on that, that that was really powerful. It was in Two Tactics, which is still my favorite. He said, uh, the, the fight, against reaction is only a temporary task of the socialists, but to fail in that task, um, to not recognize its importance is tantamount to betraying socialism. If we right. don't fight the, the extreme right now, if we don't crush them now, there is no path to socialism. There you go. You got the last word. Rosanna, thank you. Thank Anita, you. thank you. Have a good weekend. We'll see everybody on the front line. I believe we're having a membership meeting in California on Sunday, and the Ohio membership is meeting on Saturday. Sunday. And we're going to meet on the picket line on Monday. So either virtual <laughs> or real. Stay healthy, stay safe, stay physically distant, but socially close. See y'all. Take Bye. care. All right, see you later. Bye.